everyone, so today is going to be the next video of my series that I'm doing all about common makeup problems and solutions to those problems that are really simple and something that is easy for anyone at any skill level to do just to fix those issues that you're having with your makeup. So be sure to leave me your requests in the comments down below for future videos like these. I will be sure to include them in the next one. This one's going to be all about how to avoid overdoing your eyebrows. I see this all the time where people just are overdoing it with their brows. You want your brows to look natural but also defined at the same time. I personally really have this problem because I do dye my hair darker so my eyebrows are really light. They're a really light blondish ash brown color and they don't match my dark burgundy colored hair at all so I have to fill them in every day. I could dye them but I'm really scared to do that because I don't want to mess them up so I just fill them in every day. I can do this pretty quickly so it doesn't take a lot of time. So let's go ahead and get started. So the key here is less is more, and you definitely don't have to completely match your brows to your hair. It's good if they're a little bit lighter. I wouldn't recommend going darker than your hair with your brows, unless if you're a blonde, of course, and you have like brown eyebrows or something, then that's fine. So I always like to start out with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I really like this brow pencil because it's not only really affordable, but it's very thin. It has a really tiny point so you can get really precise lines and really mimic those natural brow hairs. So I always start off on the areas that I have gaps in, which is the arch for me and also some on the tail. So you only want to go over the areas that do not have hair. You don't want to totally just draw over your entire eyebrow if you have hairs there. You want to use a very light hand and also use tiny little strokes that mimic those natural hairs. So you don't want to just start in one spot and draw a full line. You just want to kind of flick the pencil to mimic those hairs. Then you want to flip it over to the other side and go over it with that spoolie to help smooth everything out. I kind of use this pencil just to kind of outline my brows and also go over areas that don't have hair because I find that this works a lot better than using powder. Powder kind of just goes all over the place if you try to outline your brows with it, especially if you're someone that has super sparse brows with hardly any hair. You want to start off with a pencil because that's going to give you the most defined but also natural as long as you blend it out. Then I like to go in with a powder and this is mostly just to color my brows since they don't match my hair but I do skip this sometimes if I'm going with just a super natural look. But for my powder, I'm just using the Coastal Scents Eyebrow Palette. This is nice because it has a lot of different colors. This is great if you are a redhead. That orange color works perfectly for that. The only thing I don't like about this is it doesn't have just a simple brown, neutral brown color. So I always mix it with the Bodyography. This is the Essential, I guess it's a little brow kit too. This has different shades as well. This one has a great one for blondes. It has two shades for brunettes. So I always mix the burgundy color out of here and then the brown color to get the perfect match for my hair, but you can always just use one color and it will work just fine. For the brow brush, I've been using the Bodyography Pro brow brush that actually came with that brow powder, but any brush like this will do. I have a really cheap one I got from Walmart that works excellent too, but you want to make sure that the brush is very thin and it's also very small so it's not going to apply too much powder. So same goes with this. A little goes a really long way. I just kind of flick the brush into the hairs. I don't press really hard. I'm barely even touching my brow. I'm just kind of gently going over it. You also want to make sure that you tap off the excess on the palette. That way you don't have too much on the brush. You want to get the smallest bit and then you can build up as you need it. And again with this, you don't want to totally fill in your brows. The secret with this is leaving a little bit of skin showing through, especially here on this bottom portion of your brow. That's where it's really going to look harsh if you just totally go straight across with the line. So you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of that kind of sparse. That way you can see where the hairs are naturally coming up and to where you don't just have like a harsh line if you know what I mean. And then for the tail you can be a little bit more dramatic with it and actually have a line there because it's not going to look as unnatural. So it's good to keep it really faint here in the center because that's where the brows start and so it's a lot less thick there if you know what I mean. So I try to keep some of the skin showing through just tiny little pieces as you can see in my brow. It's not completely filled in like a block of color across the whole thing if that makes sense. Mixing the pencil and the powder really makes for a great finish to where you don't have anything too overdone. You could just use powder or just use pencil. Just find whatever works best for you and just remember keep a super light hand so you don't overdo it. I also sometimes like to take a concealer. This is the NYX Above and Beyond Full Coverage Concealer and just a little Sigma concealer brush and I just gently go over the areas like on the outside of the brow that just helps to shape everything up but again you would want to make sure that you blend it over that with a spoolie so you don't have a harsh line. The concealer really needs to match your skin and you also want to blend it out that way you can't see it and it's not obvious. It's just a great way to clean up those edges. 
I then always finish off with an eyebrow gel. This is the NYX Control Freak. This is really great because it holds them in place. Again, you want to use a light hand with this because you don't want those plastered to your skin, hard looking eyebrows. You just want to gently go over it so it just smooths them out. They do make tinted brow gels, which are also a great option if you just want a natural tint to your brows and want to skip all the other products. That's a great option. That's it for this quick video on how to keep your eyebrows from looking overdone and keep them natural looking. I will have some other videos linked down below that are helpful when it comes to eyebrows, some other previous brow routines I've done in the past using different products, but this is the routine I've been doing recently that seems to work really well. Don't forget to leave me your requests for more problem and solution makeup videos down below. I would be glad to answer them. And I do still have a giveaway going on on my Facebook page where you can win a Pacifica Beauty hair care pack, so I'll link that down below for you guys if you want to check it out. There's still some time to enter that. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye everyone. This one is going to be all about how to keep your concealer from creasing. So it's a very similar problem a lot of people have. Something I struggle with so I'm going to share some of my little quick tips on how to prevent that from happening. The 